I am going to talk about digital dentures and I'm going to give you an overview on uh, how I work, uh, what I do, what I can produce. Um, so hopefully you'll find that interesting and we'll get started because uh, we've got some cool things to cover. So what I'll be using and what I'll be talking about is the three shape software, the full denture module, uh, with the Ivoclaw add-on. So the Ivoclaw add-on um, is obviously an additional uh, software package that you can get and that will allow you to do um, quite a few things but essentially digital BPS. You can do nathometers and uh, gothic arch tracing and oversized milling process um, so you get super accurate dentures once you uh, are finished milling. It's, um, I find it's, it's a very accurate and predictable way and you get some wonderful results. So I'll go through this. Um, if you have got an understanding of BBS, which is biofunctional prosthetic system, uh, this will help you understand it because it is based on the BPS system, which is Ivoclaw's system for making complete dentures. Um, if, you, if you're not uh, familiar with it, um, there's lots of stuff online, we do courses, I'll be doing some more lectures covering um, the BPS system by itself. So just stay tuned, keep an eye out um, and we can you know, get you educated on that, that's not a problem at all. So we'll cover um, the impressions, I'll give you a few little tips along the way, I'll probably go off on a tangent here or there, but it's, uh, it's just little tips and things that I've found. Um, I'm actually a, a, a dental technician and also a clinical dental technician. Uh, so what I do is I do all of my own work. Um, so whatever I do in the clinic, um, it has to be right because I can't blame the lab because I am the lab. I, I, I make my own, uh, my own prosthetics. So it's in my interest to find um, solutions to problems, the very common problems that we all have when we make dentures. So over the years, I've been doing this a long time, as we all have, and I've kind of worked out, with the help of mentors and going on a lot of courses, I've worked out solutions to pretty much all of the most common problems. Um, so I'll, I'll try and cover a few of them on, on here, okay? So hopefully you'll find that interesting. Uh, so let's get started. So digital dentures, it's a, it's a common term. Um, we've heard it probably a million times over Facebook. We have a lot of really good groups and uh, really good education on Facebook. We have obviously the ID, IDDA. We have uh, digital denture system users. And it's all focused around the, the, the future of dentures and how they're going to be digital and all this kind of thing. Now, when you talk to people about digital dentures, um, there's quite a few different opinions on what is a digital denture. And really, it's, it's quite hard to find an absolute definition. It doesn't really exist because if you scan something, does that make it a digital denture? If you um, take a digital impression with a trios, does that make it a digital denture? Well, at what point does it cease becoming an analog and become a digital? And I think really um, the, the only one that I can see at the moment is the new one from Ivoclaw, which is the iVotion disc. Um, I think maybe Eric Kukucha might be doing a, a, a lecture or presentation on that, which would be fantastic. Definitely watch that. That's um, no bonding. It's, it's truly um, a monolithic process. It, it, it's an excellent process. It's brand new. Um, be hitting, hitting everybody quite soon, but there's a lot of information out there already. Um, and I would say, in my opinion, that is a, a, a true digital denture because you can go uh, impressionless with that. You can, you can mill it um, straight from a scan. and it, It's really cool, so stay, stay on the lookout for that. But if we look at the screen here, we've got um, some various things which would be well, could be classed as digital dentures because they have some form of digital input along the way. You could have 3D printing. You could 3D print the teeth, 3D print the base. Yeah, I mean, you can see some of these here. Um, all achieve different results, different levels of aesthetic, longevity, plaque retention, all of this kind of thing. Um, for me personally, <clears throat> I'm still a big fan of PMMA. I think... Uh, 
you know, if you're using the PMMA materials, you, you know what you're getting. It's been around for an awful long time. It's proven. Uh, and we get great results with it. But, you know, things are changing fast and we've all need to keep up uh, with what's happening. So these are all digital dentures and you could call them digital dentures, but this is also a digital denture. This is one of my digital dentures. And this is the one that I did with um, my colleague, Vicken, uh, maybe five, six, six, six years ago now. So this was digital, uh, this was milled, um, this has glued in teeth and then we put a bit of lipstick on it with the next school composite to make it look pretty and they look great um so we've been doing these for quite a while i'm part of the uh the team at, at ivaclaw headquarters along with vicken and um, who uh, we are um there to help r d uh, and ivaclaw develop uh, technician and clinician friendly systems. So that's kind of what we we do. So if something's good, we tell them it's good. If it needs maybe a tweak here or there, and then we'll give it a tweak. And we'll ultimately end up with a, a system that will be very user friendly and get very good results. So that's kind of what we we do. We've been doing this for, for quite a long time now. And uh, we're getting really good results. And the iVotion disc, is the the latest incarnation of the Ivoclar digital Ivoclar three shape, I should say, uh, digital denture. So you can make your own mind up. What is a digital denture? Um, hopefully, I'll explain some things along the way. Um, but I think a digital denture, as long as it's had some sort of input, depending on what, uh, if it's a scan or whatever, uh, it, it'll dictate how good it is ultimately by the end user. If you put a rubbish impression in or a rubbish scan you'll get a rubbish denture out. You still need to have those skills. You still need to understand what makes a good impression or a good scan or tooth position. You still need to know that at the moment. The software you know, won't fix that for you. There's a lot of things you can tweak, but it won't correct bad workmanship. So you still need to know what you're doing. So digital clinical and technical workflow options. Now, what I'm going to show you here, um, I'll show you a brief overview. Um, but I do, for all of my work, I do Gothic Arch Trace, and I've done it for many, many years now. I am a complete convert to it. Um, I believe it's the most accurate way of recording Centric, uh, and I never get wrong bites. It's it's like a, a, a magic uh, tool to use, so I'm a, I'm a huge fan of it. And one of the ways that you can do the uh, digital denture is by using Gothic Arch Tracing. Now with BPS, it used to, well, it still does, it incorporates um, a Gothic Arch Tracer, which is called a Nathometer. And that allows you to do functional impressions and centric relation recording all in one go. And for me, it's by far the best way of doing it. I would not use anything else. It's, it's foolproof, you know what you're doing. So I'll show you that you do have the option to make Gothic Arch Tracing with this system. Um, but you also have other options as well. You, if because not everybody uh, feels comfortable with it or has the time to do Gothic arch tracing, so you can use this system for copy dentures. You can use it for immediate dentures. Um, you can use it for full folds. So I'll show you. I'll show you a few bits and bobs. Okay, so <clears throat> these are the stages of the digital denture. And as I say, if you are familiar with BPS, this will look. Quite uh, familiar. We have our first appointment, which will be the impressions and centric tray recording. I'll explain that if you don't know what a centric tray is. That will then go back to the laboratory and we'll scan that and then we'll design some custom trays, uh, incorporate our nathometer, our gothic arch tracer, and then they'll go back and they will have functional impressions put in them and the clinician will record the uh, bite the, the jaw relationship with the tracer that will then go back to the lab it will be scanned and then there'll be a try-in done a digital try-in and we can do a couple of different things here we can do a, a monoblock try-in we can print the try-in so with the old um original way of doing wax one of the problems with the wax try-ins it's a problem and a benefit but one of the problems with the wax is obviously wax warms up and it gets softer and the patients can't eat with them and drink with them and sometimes you can give them to take them home and see what the husbands or family or wife think um but they can't really use them it's purely aesthetics whereas with the the monoblock trines 
the the basically a one-to-one -one copy of what the final denture will be but it's all in acrylic so the patients can take them home can eat with them can try the suction on so it has a real benefit there obviously on the flip side of that if it's a, a solid piece of acrylic you can't move the teeth so much so this is where we rely on the digital technology to be able to take photographs and move the teeth virtually and once you become proficient at that you can you can get that so accurate it it's really really um feel because you're doing it on the screen and using the software available things like bellus and iva smile and three shape being integrated with uh, real view all of these softwares are, are just incredible for for doing this kind of thing so it's all changing but you know exciting so That'll go back for a try-in. Um, any adjustments that we need to make aesthetically will be recorded, and then that will come back to the laboratory. And then we can make adjustments, or we'll go to the final mill. So it's a four-stage appointment. However, with the iVotion disc and the latest software upgrades, um, it's essentially, I think, going to become more of a two-stage appointment system. Um, it's it's kind of um it's cutting out a lot of people worry about it but really it's just cutting out a lot of the dirty work um and you use you're using the um, technology to your advantage to save you grinding models and pouring plasters and processing dentures and all the the machinery is doing that the software is doing that and it's taking all of that dirt and dust and labor intensive side of it out of it that you know technicians potentially can actually get a life back here um, by using the machines to do the dirty work and the, the stuff that keeps them there at 9, 10 o'clock at night is, is we've all done. Um, and then that will go back for the fit. So let's go through. Uh, first appointment. So this is what we do um, at our first appointment, very similar to the BPS. We'd have our first impressions, our centric tree recording, and we do our UTS card recording. I'll explain what that is in a second. So this is our patient coming in. She has some dentures with a cant on it. Um, center line's not too far off, but the aesthetics are not great. So we need to improve that. So we take some nice photographs. We use our um, syringe, our impression syringe to take our two-stage uh, alginate impression. And we syringe a lighter bodied alginate in the heart of reach areas. And then essentially we pick up that with the true material, which is a heavier bodied um, material. And it works beautifully. You don't miss anything off the impressions. It's something I've been doing for a lot of years and it doesn't really take any extra time, maybe 30 seconds, it's not a great deal, but it ensures you're capturing everything that you need to uh, on those impressions. We do a center tree recording. A center tree recording um, essentially is a preliminary jaw relationship. It doesn't record the bite, but it records the um, jaw relationship. And what it does is it gives us a really accurate starting point for us to mount custom trays. You can even use this for bite blocks. Um, <clears throat> they're autoclavable, maybe 30 pounds, something like that. And what you can do is you can use the uh, centric tray to record um, a pretty accurate OVD starting point. We'll fine tune this later with the Gothic arch, of course, but this will give you a very uh, a very good starting point. And the idea of this is, um, if you if you have your natural teeth and you close together like that, and you just relax, your teeth will be around about three millimeters ish apart. Yeah, so you kind of everybody relaxes more or less in the same position. We don't relax with the the teeth closed together. So if you get the patient to close together uh, the lips and relax, and then put a dot and a dot and measure that, could be 70 millimeters, something along the lines of that. We know that on average freeway space is around about three millimeters. So if we take three millimeters off that measurement, and that would mimic them closed, taking away that three millimeter freeway space, then approximately you're in that closed mouth OVD. So what we do is we'll get the patient to, to go into a relaxed position. And I found the most accurate way is to get a patient to hum. So if, if you guys have got your natural teeth and you're all home and go, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, what you'll do is you'll have your teeth around about three millimeters apart. Everybody pretty much hums in exactly the same position. I've found anyway. So <clears throat> if we know that when we hum, 
our natural teeth would be roughly around three millimeters apart. You know, we're not taking into account you know erosion and all this kind of thing, but just normal, right? Um, then we we'll use a centric tray to get that measurement. So I, I put a, a, a dot on the patient's nose, a dot on the patient's chin, get the patient a hum. <laughs> doesn't matter if they've got natural teeth or not, they'll hum in the same place. Measure that, 70 millimetres, and then I get this gadget, this centric tray, which is like a boomerang with little handles uh, on the inside, and we can load this with putty, we can load this with uh, alginate, a heavy-bodied alginate, and then we put that in the patient's mouth, position it over the ridges, and get the patient to close, put the calipers back on, and what I do is I get them to close back down to 70, because then I'm not asking them to close into an o, uh, a closed OVD, because the more they close, or the more they think they're biting, the more they'll protrude. So if I get them to close back down into 70, I know if I take three millimeters off that, I'm roughly in a round, a closed mouth OVD. And I use this for everything, I use it for partials because it's got different attachments on the inside of the centre of the tray, and it's very, very accurate. It takes a bit of practice, not much. It takes a bit of practice, so um, just it, it's more just to control the patient's protruding. So you get there's a little um, notch inside you can get them to put the tongue on, and that curls the tongue back and helps just keep that mandible in position. But as a starting point, it's very, very good, very easy, very quick. Takes you know 45 seconds to do it. And as I say, they're all available, so you can use them uh, for years to come. So I take the centric tray recording. I have my uh, alginates. Everything uh, with um, the BPS and the digital denture revolves around the campus plane, not the Frankfurt plane. Campus plane, as we know, uh, supposedly it's parallel with the occlusal plane, more or less. Um, so we use the UDS CAD to record this. So this this is um, it's essentially like a fox's plane, like a real fancy fox's plane, but it's adjustable. So we can attach this to a, a, a bite uh, fork here, and then we can adjust the two little knobs on the side, line it up with the campus plane, and what we have on the front, you can see, is a little reading. So I have a little plus one, plus two, plus five, whatever. Um, and we can adjust it. So we have it level with the patient's campus plane. And then what we do is we record whatever these readings are because the software, if we choose to use the UTS card, the software will need these readings to get the uh, starting point for the occlusal plane. So it's a really cool little piece of kit, um, nice carbon fiber, it's a nice bit of kit. So this is what we'd have at the end of the uh, first appointment. We'd have upper and lower primary impressions, uh, we'd have a centric tray recording and we would have on the top right there, you can see we'd have the little readings which would be off the UDS card and this would go all the way uh, back to the laboratory for the next stage. Which would be scanning. Now ordinarily what we would do, um, if this was a, an analog way, we would have to cast these models up, uh, trim them, we would use the centric tray to then mount them on the articulator, and it's quite a labor-intensive and time-consuming process. I mean, cast the models up, let them set, trim them up, and then mount them on the articulator. You're probably talking an hour, something along the lines of that, by the time you wait for things, trim things. I know people will be sitting going, oh, I'll do it in 10 minutes, but to do a nice job and mount them properly on, on the semi-adjustable articulator and use the correct templates, it'll take you a little while to do. Whereas with this, um, your scanning, you can do the whole thing in around about 10 minutes uh, and you don't have to cast anything up, you don't have to mount anything up. So this is where for me, it's, it has a massive advantage over conventional because I don't have to have you know, loads of plaster and loads of um, trimming and plaster traps full of muck and all this kind of thing. This is really clean, really easy. Um, so, and I really like this. I think this is it's one of the best bits of it, the, the way you can scan and get away without casting uh, models up and articulating. So we scan them, scan the upper um, model, scan the lower, scan the centre tray. Uh, I have a three shape scanner. I really like the three shape uh, scanner. It's, it's cool. Uh, that one there is the new ones which have come out, which haven't got the door on. Uh, mine has got the door on. It's a, a D1000. And if you haven't uh, used 3Shape before, um, you will basically start off by creating an order. 
So we go on, I tell everybody this is just like a lab ticket. Um, you're just basically telling people or telling the lab, or in my case, I'm telling myself what I'm doing. And I'm going to say that it's a, a full full, so I'll highlight the teeth. And because I'm going to make on this uh, a 3D biplate, which is the, the custom trace with the Gothic Arch tracer inside, on the bottom right there, it says Pro Arcade Trying 3D biplate. So I just tell it which manufacturing process uh, I'm going to use. It automatically knows which material I'm going to use because it's just the white material, the try-in disc, which we use for both try-ins and these custom trays. Um, and that's it. Tell it on the top right which uh, what I'm actually going to scan in. Am I going to scan impressions or the digital impressions or what? Um, but in this case, it's, it's regular impressions in a centric tray. And then I will go through and I would scan. Now, obviously, these sequences are shortened because you don't want to sit and watch something spin around getting scanned. But I'll put them in and just it'll scan it within around about 50 seconds. It's very, very fast. And this is what I'll get. Obviously, repeat is for upper and lower. Again, I'm not going to repeat upper and lower. You get the idea just by looking at this. So we scan the upper side of the centric tray. I'll reduce the excess of that tray just so sometimes it will come right round. I don't need it. All I need is the crest of the ridge. So I'll just get a scalpel and cut that tray down so the scanner can get a nice accurate reading of inside there, even if there's undercuts. So scan the centric tray, and then I'll scan the upper and lower impressions. And these will give us our, obviously, digital models. Go around exactly the same as I would do normally with a, um, with a model, except I haven't got to get my hands dirty. I'll just click, click, click all the way around. And then this will give me my upper and lower digital models. Exactly the same as if I'd cast them, just a heck of a lot cleaner and faster. And the beauty of this is this data is saved forever. So whatever you do on digital, as we know, it goes in the cloud, it goes on a hard drive or whatever. It's there forever. Conventional, it's gone. As soon as you finish, it's gone. It's, it's, you know, it's a massive advantage to have this, this, um, this information on record forever and a day, patients lose things or care homes, etc. You can you can redo them really easily. So we go around, edge our models, and then what we do is we line up. We have our impressions and we have our centric tray, and we line these up with the centric tray. So essentially, it's like having the centric tray, and we have our upper and lower model, and it's just positioning them so the centric tray in the ridge go together so we'd have a, a, a direct representation of what was in the patient's mouth except with this it's digital okay so we line those up it puts the impression into the center of the tray do the same with the lower and then what we do we've got these landmarks so in the same way we do our model analysis with uh, bps we do the same with this so it says if you have a look on the left hand side there characteristic points tuberosity and size of papilla canine point mucolabial fold um all you do you just follow it you just do exactly as it tells you you do that on the upper and this is giving the software some landmarks because don't forget the software doesn't know you know where the size of papilla is there to scan its data so you have to tell it where these are because it will use that for positioning the occlusal plane, center lines, things like that. So we do that very quick, very easy, and do exactly the same on the lower. But slightly different things on here because you've got different anatomy. So you've got retromolar pad, obviously two retromolar pads, canine points, mucolabial fold once again. And you just click, click, click. It takes seconds to do. Really, really fast, really easy. And if you're familiar with three shape, this will be second nature to you. Maybe you're not so familiar with the denture side of it, but I mean, this is just regular three shape, same, same, same. It's, it's very intuitive. Okay. Now, if you are going to make custom trays with a Gothic arch trace, I just thought I'd show you a couple of slides here about it. Um, if you're not, if you would like to do uh, blocks or washes in dentures, uh, the old dentures and re reg you can do that. And I'll show you that on here as well. But I'll include the Gothic arch tracer because... It is based on BPS, this, this system, um, and the, in the, the Gothic Arch trees is an integral part of the BPS. So I just thought I'd show you this. We can design our Gothic Arch trees. So essentially what you do is you make 
uh, the outlines, you click around. I've shortened this sequence because, you know, this could be a three hour presentation. But you, you do the outline and essentially you make two blocks, which will be in hard acrylic. And you position the Gothic arch trace in the middle. And this little picture here shows the Gothic arch trace are positioned in between the upper and lower custom trays. This, these will be milled or printed in a hard acrylic, or hard material anyway, um, because we'll, we'll use these to do our impressions, our functional impressions. I'm a big believer, <coughs> um, the biggest mentor I have in, in, in dentistry is uh, Dr. Giro Abe. Uh, I'm an instructor for his um, technique. Uh, there's not that many instructors worldwide, um, and there's maybe 38 of, of us all together. But Dr. Arby, for me, is the greatest um, He's the greatest clinician, the greatest denture clinician uh, on the planet today. And he's worked out different ways of, of, of making dentures, which I follow, um, and he teaches, he teaches worldwide. Um, but I've never had results like it since I started doing his technique. We do courses on it, but you can go to Japan and do it as well. Um, but he, his, his technique fully revolves around closed mouth uh, functional impressions and Gothic arch tracing. And once you get into it, once you learn it, and you'll, you'll not go back um, because the results just get rid of all your problems. They genuinely, they just go. Uh, and you start enjoying dentures, and I love these dentures. I love doing these dentures because I don't have the problems that I used to. I haven't had problems for years. It's actually nice to do it now um, because I know what I'm doing. I've been taught well, and I've got real good support. And I'm using a technique that's proven. I know it works. I don't even have to ask uh, anything. I know. I know it works. I know it delivers. So we need these upper and lower custom trays so we can do our closed mouth impression techniques and also our gothic arch tracer. We can, you can mill them. Um, it's a bit costly to mill them. Uh, so you can print them. That's, I think that's the, the acknowledged way that uh, most people are doing it now. Um, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you get the same results either way. Um, it's, a, it's a hard custom tray. And what we'll do with this is um, do our impressions. This is, this is our Nathometer CAD. Um, so on the old system, the original system, you had a metal framework which the tracers clicked onto. Now with the, the digital denture, we mill or we print the actual carrier for the little plates into the tray. So there's one less piece and they're all disposable anyway. So there's one less piece to actually position. It's a brilliant modification uh, to this system. And it's one that I really, really like. And you only have your two little uh, stainless plates there to do your tracing. So this is what we have if we were going to make our um, Gothic arch traces. As I say, could mill these or print these. These have been milled. This is our little tracer. Um, if you don't know what Gothic arch tracing is, basically what it is, when you do your uh, regular bite blocks, there's a lot of room for uh, problems in those. I, I, I did bite blocks for a long, long time, and to be honest, <clears throat> yeah, you can get them right, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you can't, can't get a good result with bite blocks, because you most certainly can, but I think it's, it's a lot harder to be um, consistent with bite blocks. I think with the tracer, once you start um, learning what the information is that it's giving you, uh, I, th I think it becomes way more predictable and way easier um, to get the accurate bite every time than, than it ever is with bite blocks. So this little tracer here is what we'd use to record it. Two little bits of stainless metal, two little bite shims, which we use for the patient to actually bite against and then they can do all of their movements that they would do in everyday life. Big smiles, blow kisses, yawn, wiggle the tongue around, all this kind of thing. And we're going to record all of that information in our impressions and then record the bite. So everything is so stable in there. It's amazing. So Nathometer card, this would then go back. Um, I've put on there 3D bite plates, blocks, or duplicates go back to the surgery. But... It depends on, on, on your approach, on what would work for you in your own clinic. Um, I'll show you in a few slides these different options, these, the, the blocks or the duplicates. Um, but for this, obviously, Gothic arteries, this is what will come back to the surgery. You'd have your two 
custom trays and your two little bite shims and also the two small uh, trays apart as well. This would be the second appointment, functional impressions, gothic arch tracing, uh, refine the UTS card recording. This is just basically put it back in and just double check everything. And pick our teeth. Um, I'll show you some of the digital ways that you can do that now. Functional limbs, you can see there, we can put those trays in. Basically, come together okay, which the, you will, because you do the center tray. Um, and this is what your bite blocks would come together like as well. So the right-hand side pa uh, picture there where the patient's closing together, if those were blocks, so if you've done your upper and lower uh, alginates and done a centric tree and then you just wanted to go more of a conventional way, you could just ask for blocks made to the reading of the centric tree and the lab would do that. That would then mean you'll get blocks back which would go in close and you haven't got all that cutting and carving to try and get them to come together, which is where a lot of these problems are built in. So they'll come together like that. Um, do a dry run, make sure they fit nice. Now we do our functional impressions. Um, I use virtual impression material, PVS. Uh, we use the, the tray adhesive, that's correct for the silicon. I always use the correct one because I still see when I'm teaching courses, I still see people are surprised to hear that there is a silicon uh, impression adhesive and an alginate one and they're not compatible. So a lot of the times you see some people doing the um, the PBS impressions and they'll use alginate adhesive and it just falls off, it doesn't work. And it just causes you problems. So just make sure you're using the, the correct one. I use um, a heavy body for the border. I'll go all the way around, pop that in, and I'll put the patient's lower tray in with no impression material in, that's just dry. But what it does is it allows the patient to close down and bite against so they can put a lot of force on that as much as they want, and then they can close and do all of their movements. And this is this is absolutely critical, in my opinion, to get well-fitting dentures that are not sore, they don't move around when the patient does this or yawns or whatever, because the impressions, therefore the shape, has been made when the patient's been moving and doing all of these movements and the material's taking up that shape. And that's what you want. The overextended standard impressions of just pushing algae in and overextending everything, for me, aren't as successful as this because it doesn't take into account all of the movements. And it's just an easy way of doing it. Very, very easy, straightforward. So we do our movements, big smile, blow kisses, and a couple of others. And you'll basically get a beautiful um, border mold in there. Do a bit of relief in there on the freenums and then we put a light body in just for a bit more accuracy and we'll go over. Um, if you're interested in the, on this picture, if you see on the left hand side, um, can you see uh, just in front of the tweezers, right on the peripheries, there's a couple of uh, bits where the tree has popped through. You can see right on the edge. Those must be trimmed off because if you don't trim those off, and this goes for anything, those are just saw bits. And not only are the saw bits, what they can do and what they do do, um, it's an overextension. So when the patient does that, because that little area there will be overextended if it's kept right the way through to the final denture, it, it either causes sores up here or it'll drop the denture, break the seal, or both, usually both. So just make sure you take those down, just flatten them off, you know, whatever's poking through, just take them off. I would always do that. And then do the light bodied over the top and repeat the movements. And then what you'll get is you'll get a beautiful impression, fully functional up there, and keep that right the way through to the final denture and your denture will fit beautifully and it'll stay up there great. There's various things you can do for flabby ridges. There's, there's a bunch of different techniques, but obviously I haven't got time to go through them all now, um, but this is for a regular full full. And you'll get a really nice functional impression there. And for the lower, we repeat the process. We do our heavy bodied, around the periphery. What I always do is I'll put that upper uh, impression in before I start messing on with the lower because I don't want any silicon on my fingers. And then I pick the upper impression up, put it in. I might get some silicon on and goof my impression up. So I'll put the impression in the upper and then I'll start working on the lower and then I'll not get anything where I don't want it to be. So we'll pop that in, get the patient to close, big smile, blow kiss, big smile, blow kiss. Um, I get them to open, wiggle the tongue, close back down. And if you're doing a Dr. Arby one, there's certain movements that you would do. Um, slightly different to what the BPS system is. 
but basically you, you just after this functional impression depending on which technique you use and this is what you'll end up with you'll end up with some real nice impressions and you'll have your bite shins on so the patient's closed patients being able to mimic exactly what they're going to do on a day-to-day -day basis and you've got some lovely functional impressions now <clears throat> we have to uh, refine the UES CAD recording so we basically just pop that back in with a bite fork tweak it and then just record those readings and then they'll go back to the lab it just it's just fine tuning making sure nothing's moved making sure after the impressions the uh, information is still correct now this is the tracing um, we on the right hand side we take the shims off um, and you can replace them with these little uh, metal traces now the shims are two millimeters high uh, what you have on here is you have a little screw and the screw has a, a tapered end like a chamfered end so when you screw this through here i'll show you on the next slide if you make sure that the screw which you're going to do the tracing with the chamfered part is just popping through the plate the bit above is four millimeters so you, you're not actually changing ovds or anything here it's, it's the same so we put a bit of um, China marker on this. This material here is like a wax pencil. So we'd warm the, the picture in the middle. I'd just warm that up with a little pin flame and then draw on it. And it's just like a wax pencil. You can use this permanent marker. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, I much prefer the, the China marker. You can get them from the dental companies for a few pounds. They're not expensive. Um, click them in. And then this is what would have on that left picture you'll see the, the screw in the middle and you'll see it's pointed it's got a little point on it and that's what i'm on about so where that starts to come through the plate to the tip of that is four millimeters so it's exactly the same as what those two shims are so you're not changing anything at all here pop them in and then we ask the patient to slide around and obviously we've only got a certain amount of movement that we can do so what we'll do is we'll record that arc of movement and we'll record it by the pin and the plate coming together. And what will happen is the pin will scratch a shape, a rhombus shape or an arch shape into that China marker. And it gives you a lot of information once you know how to, to read what it, the, the term tracing uh, which is given to you. It gives you a lot of information then. So when, when our mandible moves, it does this, comes back, does that, comes back. And it's kind of always got to come back to centric to go from one side to the other and forwards. And what, what the tracer does, it shows you that in real time by way of a tracing, as you see on the screen. And the point where the movements change direction there is, a, there is a little way that you, it can trick you sometimes, but that's depending if the patient's been protruding for a long time. Now that I can tell you about that. But the point where this tracing changes direction, this point, is eccentric. It can't be anywhere else. And I've used this philosophy for, for years and years and years and years, as have many other people. Uh, Dr. Arby, he uses it. It's, it's critical in his technique. Um, I mean, so many people use this technique, but it's it's not as widely used as you would think. Um, and considering the benefits to it, it people should be at least giving it a little try because um, you would you'd be surprised at the results. So that point of where all the movements change direction is my centric. That's what I take as my centric. So what I would do is I would verify that. You can see that on the top left hand picture, you've got an arrow. That's pretty textbook, they're not all like that. Sometimes they're a bit woolly and you've got to define them a little bit more with some extra movements. But for the purposes of demonstration, you have this arrow. And if you imagine the jaw moving, the point of that arrow is where centric is. So we mark it, we put a little verification plate over the top and that little verification plate uh, has a hole in it. So we put the hole directly over the point of the arrow and then that goes back in the patient's mouth and guess what when you put it back in the pin in a relaxed position will just go straight in that hole so you just get the patient to tap and what will happen is that pin will go straight in that hole and you're confirming centric you're validating it and it's it can't be wrong it just it's amazing it's the best way to do a bite in my opinion this is what you'll have that patient can open and close there and that pin will go straight in that hole. 
We then record it with some byte registration material. I use CAD byte, um, and that'll set in about 40 seconds, really hard, and I'll have my upper and lower um, functional impressions and my byte all in one. So then we go on to the conventional process for tooth selection. So this is what I think we've done forever and a day. Um, but again, digital is changing things. Disruptive technology is coming in and it's changing everything on a, on a weekly basis. I mean, it's just crazy. This is what we do in a conventional manner. We draw our aesthetic lines on uh, using maybe a pen, using a marker, might scratch it in with a wax knife. There's a whole host of different things. We, our tooth selection, we use our living mold guides. All of these can big smiles. Yeah, there's, a, there's a million things, photographs form selected, shape guides, whole host. But things are, are changing and getting more um, more digital and more intuitive. And this, we at Ivoclaw, we have a, a, a system of software called Ivo Smile. It's developing all the time. The latest incarnation of uh, Ivo Smile actually has real denture teeth. So if you're wanting to use, for example, B63 or, you know, whatever more this 62 uh, you can you can pick those and actually use those in the patient's face using augmented uh, reality it's it's amazing so i'll show you this um this little gadget here you can download this on the app store very very cool use it on the ipad the patients can download it they can have a play and you can along the bottom there you can choose different smile designs um, you've also got the ability to, do, to choose different tooth molds, but you can do so much more with this. So the patient looks in, moves the head, left, right, and the software will track. And you can see you've got a slider there. So you can have the patient's existing teeth, the real teeth, and then you can bring in a smile design. And you can change everything about it, colour, size, width, length. And you can give the patient a real good understanding of what can be achieved with uh, a prosthetic so you, we, we can see do you like your teeth being you know wider longer shorter darker and we can change everything about it so they can get a, a real good impression here we can change the arch shapes and for me if, if i'm um if i'm talking to a patient and i'm scratching in with a pencil and i'm doing all this kind of thing compared to this sort of technology now it feels real old school and it's not it's important to understand i'm not saying that it doesn't work because it does work because we've used it for forever and get great results with it however i think really we need to embrace this technology wherever it's it's really useful and this kind of thing is very very useful and again it's just it's a cool way of doing it so you can change the tooth uh you can add bits on there's little tools that you can add a bit of tooth on and you know a bit longer a bit wider um bright white for tooth bleaching you know tooth whitening um so for, as a tool it's a very good tool that you can use with the patients um and it gets rid of a lot of the conventional way of um picking which teeth and which smile design that you, the patient would like and then that's just saved and you can email that to the lab real real simple real simple so that's either smile so these workflow options here it doesn't really matter how you get here. You might, I mean, the one in the middle, well, on the left-hand side, I've shown you is Gothic Arch Tracing. Um, you can use bite blocks if you would like to use bite blocks. I would always recommend, if you're going to do that, hard bases. Bite blocks can't, by themselves, take um, an impression very well. They'll distort, and then your denture will not fit very well. So you can use regular bite blocks. You can use the Gothic Arch Tracer, should you want to use the Gothic Arch Tracer. Or... I think this is going to be one of the most popular applications for it, the copy denture. Um, you can basically, if a patient comes in, you can do your impressions inside, re-reg it, and then scan that. Um, what you can then do is use the information that's present in the patient's existing, cop uh, in existing denture to also make any alterations you need. As long as you get the, the impressions correct and re-reg it, great, real, real simple. So that's the one I'm going to show you. So these are your three main options. There's a few more, but I'm just going to focus on these for now. Um, it doesn't matter how you get here, but as long as you get here, you've got your bite, you've got your impressions, and you've got your 
identification markers for center lines and things like that. You can use photographs if you would like to use photographs. I like using photographs, but just whatever works for you. But this is what I'm going to talk you through. Copy denture with three reg. So simple case of a couple of impressions and doing the bite. We'll go back to the lab and scan. We'll create an order. Now this time we're not going to do a um, 3D bite temp, we're going to do um, a try in or a fit. You can go straight to fit with this if you have the reference uh, photographs. And we'll set it up slightly different because we're not doing a 3D bite plate. So this time I have to tell it that we're going to do a full full. Uh, we'll highlight those teeth. We'll tell it what gingiva we're going to use. If we're going to use uh, either base or we're going to use a try in disc. Uh, it just depends on whether you're going to do a try or you're going to do a, a straight fit. We'll tell it what colour we want and we can pick that down the right hand side. And then once we've done that, we'll go up to the top and then we'll tell it which tooth material we, we want to use, uh, what colour. Uh, we use Vivid and Card. Uh, it's the exact same material as what the, the teeth are made out of on uh, denture, denture cards. This is one of the big things with um, the dentures uh, <clears throat> and all the other versions, the printed dentures and all the other things. Um, for me, this material, it's either base high impact. I've used that for years. It's bulletproof material. I love it. So the puck, the disc is made out of that. So it's it's normal acrylic. There's nothing different there. The teeth, so the, the teeth of the disc is made out of the exact same material as what the teeth on the tooth cards is made out of. So there's no difference there. And then I have a bond, which is specially made to bond both of those together. So by the time I've finished my denture, I've got uh, an Ivoclaw high impact denture with Ivoclaw teeth on it. I don't have to worry about that material, how it's going to perform in the mouth over the next year, two year, three year, I know how it's going to perform because it's the same material I've used for years and years. So there's there's nothing there's nothing to worry about here is what I'm kind of trying to say. Um, some of the new materials are unproven. A lot of them are, are unproven. Not to say that they're not good or they'll be fine, but I don't want to be the, the, the one to find out if there's a problem. I'd rather use materials that I'm, I'm familiar with and I know are proven. So this is why I, I, I use this. And, I think it's great. So then we bond, uh, sorry, not bond, we, we uh, bridge the teeth together because we're going to do it in an arch. So we'll then repeat the scanning, um, just the same, put it back in, I'm not going to show you that, but uh, put it back in, scan the upper, the lower, and uh, have it as a, a complete unit so we know where the relationship is between the upper and the lower. And then we'll have our virtual models, edge those exactly the same as we did. And on the left-hand side there, you have tuberosities again um, but you have slightly more points this time uh, on the lower because you use the pound line so you want the inside of the retromolar pad and the uh, talk to patients you want the buckle and the lingual of the retromolar pad to be highlighted canine point it will then draw a virtual line which will appear on the model and then we use that as our pound line for setting our teeth okay so all these little uh, landmarks that you put on the model will act as a guide when you come to set these teeth up later on okay dead simple takes 30 seconds to do that really fast really nice we then use our little outline tool so we'll go around click 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 you can draw it as well if you make a mistake you can move it but what this will do is this will outline the uh, actual denture base now because these are functional impressions i want all of that periphery i don't want to cut round it short or anything because it's a functional limb so I want all of that to be there so I go right to the very edge of the model and keep as much as I need to on there which is pretty much everything do the same for the low and then those will be my denture base extensions because the functional will go right up to the edge we can then do our path of insertion now you can set this from view so you can move the model into a position where you're happy with it and then just click and set it from view or you can move it in uh, little degrees and just five degrees or change that. But whatever you want it to be, and it'll show you down the side the depth of your undercut depending on which way that you're moving it. And this is for you blocking out, okay? The blocking out side of things is simple. You just add wax and you can remove it just like you would do in a, in a, uh, with a wax knife, okay? Now, I have a part tooth portfolio. You have a bunch of different options in here. 
Um, you have blue line Fenaras, Vividen SDL, Vividen PE, um, depending on which ones uh, you want to use. I, I like the, the Fenaris molds, I think they're really, really nice. Um, and you have these full arch libraries. Now, you do have the option to use carded teeth in this system. For me, the, the full arch libraries make way more sense for everything because what you're actually going to get at the end of it is an exact one-to-one -one of, of your trying. Nothing's going to change. When you're bonding teeth in and you can't, you don't have any models here, you don't have it on the Arctic, so if you've got a system where you're bonding the teeth in and then that's going straight to the patient, you don't know if you've bonded those teeth in correctly, if something's moved, if there's been a bit of muck underneath, it hasn't quite gone in correct, and you'll find that out chair side, which is not what I want to do. I want to know that what I'm going to take to that patient is exactly what was on that screen. And this full arch library does exactly that. It gives me that option. It's Again, it's, it's pretty foolproof. So... We choose our teeth. There's a, a tooth libraries there. Um, if you choose the full arch library, what it'll do is it'll give you the anteriors. You have different options. You can pick larger posteriors, etc. But it'll give you a one by twenty-eight um, in a in a full full set, and it'll be everything will be set up correctly and the occlusion and everything. It'll just go bang, and it, it it's done. But you can move everything. So what I'll do is I'll choose which teeth according to maybe pictures or existing dentures or whatever. And then I'll start to use the tools on the uh, left-hand side there, um, which will allow me to move teeth um, in uh, you know, uh, sections, quadrants, uh, individually or all different ways. So I'll start off by positioning the most important ones, which will be the posteriors, make sure that they're in the correct position, because if they're not in the right position, then you know, things can tip, things can move, and they won't function correctly. So I'll get them in a rough position, and then I'll start adjusting them. And because you have all the different tools here down the side, and you can adjust everything to do with these teeth, we can modify them infinitely. So I'll show you some of the uh, options. So because this is a, a um, copy denture, we've scanned that, haven't we? We've got the upper and lower impressions in there. Now, I can fade that in and out, so, for, and the same applies for immediate. So, I can see the patient's existing dentures or existing teeth on an immediate, and then I can move those new teeth. And if I need to make any corrections, center lines, doesn't matter, angles, anything, I can then move them. I can ghost the, the patient's existing dentures or the natural teeth or the block. If I've built a block up and got the right lip support, I can move the teeth. And I can just fade it in and out until I know I've got it in exactly the right position. Now, doing this in an analog way is really laborious and it takes a lot of time. Doing it in a digital way, it's a click and a drag. It's just night and day. It's great. So I'll move them into the um, approximate position that I want them to be. And then I can start doing some individual characterization. So I can, if I want to have a twist, a turn, a gap, uh, but an implication, if I want to modify the actual shape of the tooth or the size of the tooth, I can do that. I can select it individually and bring the neck out, bring the tip out, twist it. I can do anything on here. Now, that I would do in a, in a normal situation, but there's a whole host of other things that I couldn't do in an analog way because I'm governed by the size of the teeth I pick off the card. Whereas with this, I'm going to mill this arch so I can do whatever I want with this arch, pretty much, and it'll mill out whatever design I put into it. And that's something that I can't do with a conventional way. So if I need to modify things, I'll move them, I'll twist them. This thing here um, is the uh, lines, you know, when I was saying about putting the um, buccal and lingual parts of the, uh, the dots, where you can see the lines there, the green lines, and this is what I'll use for settling uh, the posteriors. There's my pound line. It's all digitally on the model. So I can just grab them in an arch. I can also do um, symmetric design. So if I want to move one and the other move exactly the same, I just click the button and it'll move them together. Or I can do it individually. It doesn't matter. I can do I can do anything on here that I can do chairs uh, lab side. 
this is something that's really cool. So I can modify the teeth. So if you've got, if you're trying to match a tooth or um, you want to make your favorite mold of tooth a bit bigger, a bit longer, you can't do that conventionally because you get what you're given from the manufacturers. Whereas with this, because I'm going to mill it and I can modify this, I can get whatever shape tooth I want. So here I can twist them. I can make them longer, shorter. I can put gaps in the diastomas. You'll have to excuse me, patient talk sometimes, I'll slip in there, I'm used to it. But I can put diastomas in, I can make the, the, the neck wider, I can do a whole host of things on here. And whatever I do, it'll be milled out like that. Now I can't do this with carded teeth, nobody can, because again, you get you set sizes, that's what you get given. Whereas with this, I can modify everything about it. This is why it's really cool. I also have this 2D cross section, so I'm a big fan of lingualized occlusion. I really like that. I find it um, really predictable and stable and it's brilliant for grinding in. So I can do a 2D cross section of that. And the whole point of that is I want the um, upper cusp to come down in the lower fossa and I want that fossa to be smack bang over the, the most supportive area of that ridge, usually in the middle of the ridge on the crest. So I can check that by doing a 2D cross section I'm going through and I can see where that fossil is in relation to the ridge. Normally I would use a candula static laser for that. I don't have to, I can do it on here really easily and I can just move them accordingly. But I can also modify the cusp shape. I can modify the fossil shape. So if I want to get like a real heavy sort of contact and a big cusp, I can just change them. I can morph that and it'll mill it out. Can't do that in normal teeth. So there's a lot of things. I mean, I'm only scratching the surface here of what you can do. There's an awful lot of things that you can do with this system and this software. Grinding in takes forever. You do fully balanced. It takes a long, long time. With this, I can set it away, put the articulator in, and you can see on the left-hand side there, not the first uh, box, but the second one where it says virtual articulation, there's a little play button and a little uh, refresh button. If I click the play, it'll move that articulator left, right, and produce it. And then what it'll do is it'll show me the, the contact areas. So that here are the contact areas, and I can use the occlusal compass. And then what I can do, I can see it adapt design. So just above that little pause in the little green uh, pause and play button is adapt design. Click that. What I'm virtually doing there on the software is grinding in and I can choose how much I want to grind in. How cool is that? That takes me so long in the lab to do, to get a nice balance. I'm just clicking a button here and it's doing it automatically. And because it's going to mill it out of an arch, uh, out of a disc, whatever I design, that's what it's going to mill. How cool is that? So there's, there's so many things which are, are great on here. Um, so do the, the virtual grinding in, and now we need to do uh, scope and anatomy so if you want to put any more surface texture in the teeth or you want to customize it you can do that as well you can you can put more pericomita in you can modify you can cut back you can do all sorts with this uh, software and if the guys who are really proficient with the crown and bridge side of it get their hands on this they can do way more because they're so experienced with this side of it um, it's amazing. I've watched them do it and it's, it's amazing what they can uh, come up with because they're, they're so experienced with this software. Um, we start off with our, our gingiva, we get our teeth however we want them and then we start off with our gingiva. Now this here on the left is literally like a wax knife and some wax. So I can carve it, I can add a bit of wax, I can smooth it, I can do everything that I would do normally with a wax knife and a Bunsen burner. I'm just doing this here with a mouse. So here I'm carving back a little bit and I can do a, a nice wax up. The new ginger is uh, automatic. They'll do you uh, a nice ginger, but I'm just showing here that you can modify them yourself if you want to customize it. And you can end up with some nice stippling and contouring and you can put your zenith points in and the papillas. You can put ruby in. You can, you can modify it however you would do it conventionally in the lab. And again, whatever you do, it'll mill it out. You'll get exactly that out. So this is where I would end up being, if I was doing a full, full denture, I'd do the upper and lower. And I could mill that at that stage, either in a hard material 
which I would use as a try-in, or I can do that where I can go straight to a fit and I can do it as a final denture, because I'm only really designing it. So if I've got, for example, <coughs> that patient's existing dentures and they look great in the patient's mouth, and I've just copied and modified and moved the teeth to match as near as I can, do I really need to do a try-in on that? Probably not, because I know, I know what the old ones look like. I'll have some photographs. I've matched it with the new ones. I know I have, because I've got it on the, uh, on the screen. So I can really go straight to fit from that. And I know what it's going to look like in the patient's mouth. So you can essentially do more of like a, a two stage, three stage appointment, you know, you miss a one out. So this becomes a little bit of, a, of an optional, um, optional stage. So you can print it um, in tooth colored uh, material, or you can mill it in the, the white. It, it's essentially, you just, it's a verification try in this. It's more for me. Um, to see if I've got the bite right, is the fit good, is the tooth length, the usual thing on the train. Um, but of course, if you're doing it in the print, you can do A1, A2, A3, and you can try them. They can even keep them as a spare, I suppose, an emergency set. If they ever lost them or broke, at least they'd have something. Um, try that in, and then we make any adjustments. But because these are uh, acrylic, we can test the bite, we can test it. You can ask them the bite, a biscuit, we can tell them they can take it home, they can do whatever they need to do with it. Um, and you'll get a real good indication of whether your final denture is going to be successful or not. Okay, so this is what I like about this. It's, it's a really nice way of doing it. And again, they can keep it as a spare. So a digital process on the finishing. So we get to the stage where the, the teeth are in the correct position. We've got our wax up where we're happy. We'll then send that through to the cam. It'll split it in between to a denture base and a denture tooth arch. And it'll mill this all in one arch, so the denture's a lot stronger. And then it does its first mill. So its first mill will mill oversized, apart from the two areas where the arch and the actual base joins. That'll be milled perfect. So this is what you'll end up with out of your first pass at the mill. We then put our special card bond in, which is a specific material to bond these two materials together. Pop that in and cure it together. So we, we basically, at the end of the, the first mill, this is what we have. And then this will go back into the mill and do our setting stage. So all of the excess, it'll be ground off. And more importantly, this now will mill that denture down to a perfect uh, representation of what was on the screen. So it doesn't really matter how you've bonded that in so much because it'll just mill it all in the fine mill exactly how you have designed it. And then you've just got to cut the bars off and then you've got your denture. This is about six year old, this denture. This is one of the very first ones I did. But I mean, that's what it comes out of the mill like. It's beautiful. All I've done is cut the bars off. You can still see the milling lines so fine on it. You micron stick. Try that in, check our occlusion. And we've got a happy patient. Massive difference. And if you are a big fan of making them look pretty, as long as you get them to that stage, you can then put some composite on. I like putting the composite on and make it look a bit more realistic. Um, but it's paying my so you can put whatever you want on uh, the same as you would do with any other denture. There's no different. You don't have to treat it any different. And it'll last the same as it would on uh, a regular denture. So these are some of the BBS de digital dentures that we've done over the years. They look lovely. I mean, there's nothing the matter with those in the patient's mouth. They're delighted with them. What you can do to date, you can do single arches, uh, you can do full folds, you can do copies, you can do uh, the copies I showed you there, you can do immediate. There's pretty much, uh, you know, you can do, you can do everything that you would do normally. You can scan bite blocks, uh, as I showed you, put some marks on, uh, re-reg them. And you can also, of course, use it for BBS and Dr. RB technique with the Gothic Arch Tracer. Uh, and you can scan the FCB impressions for Dr. RB's technique. Um, so that's pretty much about it. The only thing I'd like to say is if you do want to learn more about any of this, we do courses on... Um, BPS, we do courses on BPS clinical and technical. We do courses on
RB, the young ones uh, who were official Dr. RBA instructors. Uh, they're all through Ivor Clark. We have Chris Egan, we have John Wibberley, we have um, myself, uh, and we have Paul McNally in Ireland. And those are the only four official uh, approved trainers who will give you the proper training on Dr. Arby technique, let you get suction on lower dentures, and we run those, we run Ivor Base, we run digital denture courses, we do all sorts. And this is the girl that um, you can contact for further information or go on our course website. Uh, that's the phone number and, and address there. So hopefully you've enjoyed that. Um, it's given you a bit of information on digital and it hasn't been too boring and you've you've learned a little something there. Um, so thank you very much for your attention and thank you very much last of all to all the NHS key workers and I mean that's what it's all about here. So. Anything you do, donate to any of our lectures, uh, go straight to supporting these guys, uh, IDDA and um, ultimately the NHS frontline workers who are keeping us all safe. So thank you very much to those guys and uh, hope you've enjoyed it.